In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to import a DXF into Risa 3D using two different methods. So the first way is going to be with the DXF underlay, and the second way is going to be importing the DXF as actual elements. So let's go ahead and dive into the first option there, which is importing it as a DXF underlay. So to sort of give you some context, uh, the DXF underlay is going to be pretty similar to this rectangular drawing grid that you're used to seeing when you first open the program. So to sort of take a look at the settings with, for this particular drawing grid, if we go into Drawing Tools and look at the Display Grid, we can see that by default it's set to rectangular. So here you can, uh, you can make changes to those drawing grid simply by changing the value and pressing Enter. And then you can also just change the type by saying, let me do a radial maybe, and then change the properties for that as well. But your third option is choosing a DXF underlay. So in this case, we will use this option if maybe the rectangular and the radial don't necessarily meet our criteria. Maybe we have something a little bit more complex in geometry and someone's already drawn it up in uh, DXF format. So why not just bring it in? So that's what this DXF underlay option is going to give you the ability to do. So we can just go ahead and press DXF underlay. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the DXF we're going to go ahead and bring in in this demonstration. So in this case, we've got a cell tower elevation. So again, this is something that sometimes people can find it easier to just go ahead and mock up in a CAD software. So that's what we have here. And so this can be brought directly into Risa 3D. And uh, you can easily just start to draw over those lines and create your model. So if I just really quickly, before we jump into Risa 3D, just highlight some of these elements, you can see that the layer type is just set to zero for all of them. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, you can also change the layer types and that'll show you just a second here how that'll affect how you can uh, change things like the colors of each of those lines and make it maybe a little bit easier for you to draw your model once you get into Risa 3D. So let's go ahead and jump back into Risa 3D and you'll see you have a few options here before you press your import button. So you'll want to choose the, the grid plane that you want to display your DXF underlay in while you're within Risa 3D. And then a DXF scale factor will allow you to go ahead and scale that up or down as necessary. And then you can change the units as need be as well. So let's go ahead and import that cell tower DXF that we were just looking at by pressing the import and then just selecting that cell tower DXF. Go ahead and press open. And then as I mentioned, the layers will actually give you some additional options. But again, since we just had one layer and it was labeled as the layer called zero, we'll just see one layer here. If I had different layers, I can say, hey, maybe I want the uh, this particular layer to be blue and then I want the next one to be purple, uh, so on and so forth. But again, since we just have one layer, I can just go ahead and change my color as necessary here. So maybe I wanna make it pop a little bit more than that standard kind of faint gray color you're used to seeing. So it's easier to see. So I can just press, select my color there and press done. And as you can see, automatically it brings in that cell tower DXF. So again, just to clarify, this is an actual members. So if I click on these, you can see there's nothing happens and there's no properties for them. It's really just a tracing paper, if you will, to go ahead and begin mocking up your model. So what you'll see is if I go back into my home tab and I click my members button, I can now start using these intersection points to start creating my model. And you see these dots here actually in the center where these, these uh, two braces intersect, for example, and that's actually a snapping point too. So if I needed to draw them as two separate members, I can do that. And you can see how really easy the model is just coming together just by clicking the points and mocking that up. That way I have my geometry for my cell tower there and I can begin copying this and rotating it as necessary to create a 3D structure. So this is going to be the first method of performing that DXF import. And again, this is as the underlay option so that you can use it as a tracing paper, if you will, to begin tracing over with members. So now the second option is going to be importing the DXF as actual elements. So to do that um, and to demonstrate that, we're going to be taking a look at a geodesic dome or anything for that matter that can be easily mocked up within a CAD software. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that geometry is that we're going to bring in. So if I go to my geodesic dome now and take a look at that, this is actually a 3D element here that we've modeled. So we totally get that sometimes it's just easier to mock up things like this or just any complex geometries within your CAD software. So that's why this import process is here to make that easier for you to just simply bring it into Risa 3D. So one thing before we automatically import this is if I just click on one of these elements, you can actually see here that it has a layer type assigned to it. So here I've actually selected some plate elements as well as some members. So you can see in my layers, 
that I have plate selected, I have a joint selected, and I have some hot rolled shapes here selected. So these are pretty self-explanatory. The HR is gonna stand for hot rolled, as in hot rolled steel. And then the HR1 is actually the nomenclature that we've designated that we'd like the program to use for the section set for that member. So you'll see, and I'll show you once we bring this in, that the HR1 section set will be created based off of these layers nomenclatures. So we'll go ahead and perform this import process. We just jump back into Risa 3D. Let's go ahead and just create a new file. And all you have to do is just click out of this and you can go to file, import, file, import, DXF. And this time we wanna bring in the geodesic dome. So if I go open, you'll just have a few uh, settings to choose here before you press okay. We'll keep our units the same, our scale factor. We don't need to scale it up or down, so we'll keep that. And then I'll just use the standard vertical axis for CAD. And then in this case, I actually want to translate the layers to section sets and the layers to shapes because I had, I had gone through that forethought of labeling those within my CAD software. And so I actually want that to be translated to section sets and shapes. So if I just press OK here in just a second, you'll see this geodesic dome actually just appear and it'll have all those properties that we had assigned to it back in AutoCAD. So now we have our dome in here. We can just do a quick review and make sure that that looks right. So it looks good. And then you can also just click on any one of these elements here and see their properties. So if I click on this, you can see that it's actually a plate element with this concrete material assigned to it, thickness assigned to it. And then I can also click on my members here. And then more specifically, we can take a look at that nomenclature I was talking about. So if you remember back in AutoCAD, we saw that this these members were drawn with a layer type called HR, HR1. So the HR again stood for hot rolled steel, which is why the material type is set to that. And then the section set that it created was HR1. So that's the section set for these members. So really you can see how quickly that that made the creation of this model go for you. And so at this point as a design engineer, you can get to just applying some boundary conditions, applying your loads, making any other small tweaks, and then just solving your model and moving forward with your design. So this was a quick look at importing a DXF into Risa 3D. Thanks for watching. For more information about Risa 3D, please visit risa.com.